Hey everybody, on this episode, Coach Kenny oh, Thorne no. from Georgia's Tech wow. stops by. Coach, how you doing? I'm welcome doing good. Show. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, we're here at the Kalamazoo, the boys' national tournament. Uh, we just Great watched place. Yeah. watched one of your former students, Kevin Eubanks, uh, play a, a fun exhibition match. And um, it's great to have you here, and I hope that uh, you're enjoying the tennis so far. Oh, it's always good to get back here. It's uh, so much history here. I think every player looks forward to getting back here and just, just seeing what's going to happen this year. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I wanted to spend a few minutes here talking about uh, you, your team, um, your coaching philosophies, all your experience that you have. So why don't you give the listeners a little bit of background about your story, where when you started as a kid, when you started playing tennis, and how you got into yeah. coaching. Yeah, I uh, started probably late nowadays. I started at age nine. Okay. And uh, was in actually uh, Corpus Christi, Texas for about six months and took some lessons from a guy called Bob Mapes. And he's, uh, a lot of people would know, he's, he was a really good coach back then. But was only there for a little while, went to Hot Springs, Arkansas, went to Huntsville, Alabama, and then my end of my junior career, I was in Richmond, Virginia for two years, right before I decided to go to college and ended up at Georgia Tech. Okay. Uh, so Same school that same school that, 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 uh, that fortunately they allowed me to come back so I kind of hadn't left school I'm still in school okay. 20 years later so uh, kind of a, a, a great time in junior tennis uh, great time through the, the college ranks and then had a little chance to play on the pro tour awesome so yeah talk to me a little bit about um, how you got involved in tennis you said nine like I started when I was eight which uh -huh. I think was probably late and I yeah. grew up in Canada where it was winter most of the year so it was once a week but ice hockey and all the other sports were, were more of the thing we did and then you know when I was about 12 I started more I mean did you have a similar path um, how did, but, you, but you ended up playing in the tour as well so. yeah I we actually as a family Believe it or not, we were water skiers. Okay. And we were like way into water skiing. My mom was like really one of the nation's best trick skiers. Okay. And so we That's got cool. in and we were like doing tricks, slalom and jump skiing. And uh, my dad kind of looked at it and he's like, where are we going to end up with this? You know, is this really <laughs> going to It's pretty expensive. You got to buy a boat. Yeah. Gas is getting more expensive. At that time, it was under a dollar. Is there for so trick skiing? There actually is. Okay. There and actually your mom did is. that? My mom did it, okay. and she got us into it. And so we were, we were pretty competitive uh, in sports anyway. Okay. And my dad kind of got a little smart and said, hey, this is going to be a little bit expensive. And I don't know of any scholarships that you get in college right, for skiing. Right, sure. So, yeah. <laughs> and so... He, uh, he promptly got us out and got us into uh, tennis, or got me into tennis. My sisters actually did uh, gymnastics, some other sports, but uh, I got into tennis at age nine okay. and stuck with it. And I think the time when I really started taking it seriously, uh, I was with a coach when I was 15 years old. I was actually living in Florence, Alabama, going to Huntsville, Alabama for coaching uh, with a guy named Bill Tim. And uh, he coached another good friend of mine, Bri uh, Brian Shelton, yep. and That's some it, who's others at Florida. who's at yep. Florida now and doing a great job. Um, but uh, Coach Tim really taught me what it, first of all, work ethic, what it really takes to, to try to really improve at the highest level, and just an understanding of the game to really understand. We used to watch, you know, probably your listeners don't don't even doesn't ring a bell with these names or videos but Borg McEnroe and the tiebreaker at Wimbledon and all going back to yeah, just yeah. watching well, these and, and <laughs> analyzing and you're too young too so I don't yeah. know well, I don't know from my parents my dad <laughs> but like we're like, one of your grandparents yeah, at least that's my, good I asked yeah. some of the kids actually at one of the exposure camps the other week um, when I was at Penn and they don't even know who Sampras yeah. and Agassi are yeah. and I'm like how are you kidding yeah you, you, <laughs> you, you know? gotta be careful yeah, who you mention and so but but Borg and McEnroe at that time yeah. and, and my, one of my idols growing up with Stefan Edberg of course and the way yeah, he played him. yeah, yeah and, and just his demeanor yeah and who he was on the court and um, I, I just really enjoyed watching him and his aggressive style but we watched all different styles and and just learned the game of tennis when I was 15 and 16 years old yeah. and I lived there for two years and uh, it's interesting we uh, uh, it was all tennis at that time okay and my parents ended up moving uh, up to Richmond Virginia 
And when they did it, I was, I, all I knew was tennis. I would go out at Friday nights, hit serves and do it. And they're like, did you know there's Friday night football games at your high school that you can attend? Go to, yeah. yeah. they actually, some normal kids actually do that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I need to work on my serve. And I was just that kind of, that, that, kid who that, loved that it. was the kid. I Enthusiasm. enjoyed it, loved it. And, uh, but it was great because I did, I joined the high school tennis team. Uh, it was one of my first team tennis events. Yep. Loved it. Met the guys there. I'm still friends with guys on my high school tennis team, right. which is really unique. But also, uh, it, it was it was great for me to be on a team of tennis when it's such you know it's an individual sport. And yeah, it, it's it's, it's a, fun to be on a team. I mean, oh, that's, it's that's what's so great about college tennis, right? And um, it's funny that you say that you were always out there hitting serves. I I just I came back from Ottawa recently. I was doing a couple seminars there at a big tournament, and I met my old coach. You know, and mm. I sat down with him and had a talk, and um, he was just explaining about. It. I said, so what was I like? You know, as a kid, <laughs> what, what you know, what what stories do you have to tell? And one of them was like, yeah, you used to stick at this, go to the club club and you'd be there little 12 year old you and your parents would be calling going where are you where are you you, know yeah, I mean? you were that kid too. I was that kid too in a lot of okay, ways good, but I mean good. I think I think I did go to some of those events and stuff like that but I mean mm. maybe that's why I didn't make the pro tour <laughs> <laughs> too many of the too events many, yeah yeah, yeah. it's a balance it yeah. is great I mean you yeah. have to put in the time and those are those are good things but there's something to be said about the balance yeah. of uh, an athlete and and that's my parents understood that but also, I think as long as you've instilled a good work ethic, I think uh, you can have a balance. Yeah. And so after college, you spent four years at Georgia Tech? Four years at Georgia Tech. Okay. And then after what, what level did you feel you were at or what made you feel like, okay, now I can take my game to the next level? Because I know that, you know, this talk's happening all the time. Should I turn pro right away? Do I go to college? How many years do I spend? Yeah. Am I even good enough to play on the tour? Yeah. Um, what's, what's some of the advice I, I, it's a tough. It's a tough thing because I, I think if you're good enough, you don't have to ask those questions. Right. You just, yeah, you, you're drawn in and, and you're there. And it's like, you're crazy not to turn pro. Right. And you know, there's, there's a lot of examples of guys going and, a Sam Query who's going to college and going to college and he just went in challengers and it's like I mean his ranking was almost too high that he he it would have been crazy to go to you know to college right. and right uh, you know you get a lot of people just thinking they've won a match on a, in the futures or they've beaten a guy who's ranked 800 you don't want to be 800 right you do not want to be excited about playing futures you want to get out of futures okay. yeah and so I think it's uh, I've always said, you know, focus on getting better. And, you know, for me, my dad said, you do one thing, you get a degree, yep. and then do whatever you want, and I'll be behind you in pro tennis, it's great, but I, I want you to get your degree. And so I got into something to fall back on. Yeah. Because it's tough, yeah, right? The tour it's, is it's, tough. There's no guarantees, injuries. I, I had some injuries too. I was yep. a little bit injury prone. So uh, I got an industrial engineering degree. And, um, and then I knew I wanted to play pro tennis. So I was going to give it the best shot. But there was a lot of comfort for me knowing that I had this degree. Yeah. And then I was getting ready to live out a dream. And the dream became you know, a nightmare at times, but it's still a dream. And then, but, but I always, hey, I did it. I had this degree yeah. and I was able to kind of fight through a lot of the tough times. So I was able to play about eight years and depending on who you ask, I did well or I did terrible. Right. I mean, it's all relative, isn't it? Sure, sure. <laughs> what was the highest ranking you got to? I got to 121 in singles That's and good. 67 in doubles. And I got to play in all the Grand Slams, except for the French Open and singles. Yep. But it's, and were you able to make a living off of it? For a certain period of time? You know what? The way I lived, yes. Yeah. I, I wasn't this guy that went out and won, you know, won a tournament, did well, and bought a boat. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, I don't yeah. do that. <laughs> I, I was like, okay, you budget. My dad was a certified financial planner. Okay. And so, so you had I, good was, guidance. I had very good guidance. I had good parents that uh, kept my head on straight. And so I, I was able to, and I actually got married not uh, long after the tour. And my wife was able to travel, which I think that's very important for a marriage. Yep. And uh, so we got to see the world yeah. for about eight years. Unbelievable experience, it's right? It's really incredible experience. And so what brought you back to college coaching then? You know? I had no clue I was going to go back into college coaching. Okay. I really did not think I was going to be in college coaching. I thought I was going to take my degree, industrial engineering, and start out and uh, just go that path. 
and I came on as I was coming off the tour as an assistant coach at Georgia Tech and uh, the head coach, and head coach left and the position opened up and they talked to me and I literally I was like why am I not been thinking about this this yeah. is I mean I had the whole time in the juniors playing here at Kalamazoo yeah into the college and so many good and tough times same thing on the pro tour what an honor it is to help you know kids coming through with the same dreams yep yep but to kind of let's say reality slap yep. reality into them because i needed that as well but at the same time keep dreaming right keep going for it. you can do it yeah i mean if i can do it you know growing in hot springs arkansas yep and then getting through and being able to play at Wimbledon, I know there's so many others with a lot more talent than me yeah. uh, can do it. Right. And so uh, it was, it's been an honor to be able to get out here and, and you know, kind of help guys make the transition uh, to each share different level. Share your experiences, right? Share the experiences yeah. and maybe go pro and maybe not. Right. We've had, you know, so many success stories of guys that, you know, maybe wanted to play pro but didn't quite work out great jobs now and they're doing phenomenal and it, it's just that's rewarding right. That's fun to see that's great and so what's what, you know what do you look for now in in prospects uh, what type of players do you think excel in college and and how does that philosophy that you instill with your team yeah I think it's important now because there's so much information out there there's it, obviously you got to be a certain level academically and tennis wise we you know there's some standards you have to meet yeah, yeah. but uh, the guys that have done best for us are guys that are very coachable okay and that trust you and uh, you know I have to be trustworthy if I'm not trustworthy it doesn't matter right um, so I've got to earn that trust and in, in the recruiting process it, it can be difficult because you only have so much time and you got it right. so yeah. but uh, if if the players have trusted us and the guys that have come in and they've been like sponges oh, it, it's it's amazing to see how much better they they truly get right. and, and they believe in the process um, I, I you know I like guys with high aspirations on and off the court yeah um, I think that had, you know obviously plays in but also um, a strong thing and I think everybody says it you know is it is character yeah. you, if, if you don't have character it's gonna it, it's gonna hurt you down the road yeah. somewhere and so, maybe sooner maybe later but it's gonna hurt you when you come to a t tournament like this right yeah. and so obviously as you said players have to be at a certain level yeah. because your team's at a certain level and right. you're gonna have to maintain that or try to get better everyone wants to, get better, wants to get right? better so you want to recruit yeah. the next better place okay so you're here and let's say there's five kids that are at that level yeah. they show athleticism and all and, and stuff so wh what are you looking for um, when you're here then and yeah. you're not able to talk to them but you're just watching what are you looking for yeah, that might stand good. out yeah, it's good. It's it, you know, I mean, it, you almost look for tougher situations, right? And you see, or how they treat their parents, or just you're kind of just listening in how they treat their coaches. Are they, you know, hey, get away! I don't need to listen to that. You know, is that, are they receiving? Right. And no one. I mean, it's always tough because we're all competitors out here, and you know, everybody hates losing. We get that. But yeah, are are they open to information? Are they respectful? Yeah. Um, are they working hard? Obviously, sure. yeah. Everybody says they're working hard, and you try to dive through that whole yeah. thing yeah. And, and see. I mean, I thought I worked hard. I'm not putting it on them. I, I I thought I was a hard worker, and then it's like anything else. You get around somebody. Ooh, that guy's really. He he yeah. really works yeah. hard. And, and I thought I did. So. You're trying to, you know, I, I think every coach thinks their player works hard. And, yep. and so you just, you're, you're trying to, to weed through all of it. And uh, it's, it's not a perfect process, but also realizing everybody's in transition. Yeah, and you're you're, not you're gonna be the perfect. finished product, yeah. or they wouldn't yeah. be here. That's right. You know, that's right. So, I always try to tell kids that too, and yeah. I'm like, look, be yourself. Yeah. Go out there. Obviously, the, the things that you're mentioning are so important, but it's like you know, they don't coaches don't expect you to no, be perfect. You're a 15, no, 16, no. 17, 18 year old kid. Yeah. I mean, and you're developing, but if you're trying, yeah, then, it, it you know, is that's a big matters, difference right? in that. I mean, I've, I've yeah. got four kids, and okay. And, imperfectly parented all of them and, <laughs> and tried to do my best and then I got one and they and turned yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah we'll talk later yeah. but it, it's it's one of those things that each kid is so different yeah and coming from my own family yeah and so all you get here and you got what 256 yeah different kids yeah and they're motivated in different ways you got all different types of uh 
personalities, desires, and maybe the rankings have been high, and they're you know they kind of dive and they're battling that whole thing. I'm supposed to win, and all the pressures, and and so coaches here they understand it and, yeah. and they get it. And but if you're coachable and you trust, you can work through it. Yeah, makes if, sense. If not, makes then sense. you know I, I, it's it's hard to help people. Absolutely. No, I get it. Um, that's really, really good advice. Um, Georgia Tech, mm. it's a very good academic school, yeah. right? So, um, you know, standards-wise, the balance, you know, uh, how do they, you know, going to a very demanding academic school mm. and a very demanding tennis program mm. and all sports for that fact, yeah. you know, that want to compete, that want to win, coaches that want to win. How do players balance that? Yeah, I, I think you've got to decide that you can, you can be excellent in both. You're not trying to, uh, you can honestly dive into being excellent in both. And there's a, always give and take. Yeah. You know, you don't have to have the 4.0 GPA and you know, th th there's gonna be a little bit of the balance there, but I think you go in thinking, hey, I can, I can do both. I can play pro tennis. I can get good grades. We've had examples of that. We have Kevin King came through. Yeah. Uh, I think like a 3.5 GPA in mechanical engineering and did all these projects, won some project events that they had at Georgia Tech for mechanical engineers and just did a phenomenal job there and then is now out qualified for the Australian Open this last year and is top, I don't know, 170 or so in the world right now. Yeah, and up to you. just a great, <laughs> it's all coaching. It was a, no, he's, he's actually one of those guys that uh, is just a great all-around character. His parents uh, uh, parent prop up their parents. They did yeah. a phenomenal job with him. Yeah. They got him studying before classes even started. I don't, didn't even know that existed. Yeah. But his parents got him doing that. And I mean, it's, it's time management. It's decide what you're gonna do with your time. Because you can go out and you can watch movies all the time and yeah. we all wanna watch movies, that's fine. Good, do it, but what's important to you? How are you gonna prioritize? Yeah. And uh, you can, that's the thing, you can do both. Yeah. You really can. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Cause like, you know, sometimes parents come up and they're so amazed as, as they should be. Cause it's, it takes a special individual to be that, you know, top of the class yeah. and then top on the tennis bowl yeah. and sort of, you know, some of those schools as we're talking about yourself, your, your school, sorry, Georgia Tech to the Stanford's and Harvard's yeah. of the world. And those kids really do. They're the five star blue chip players and, and they are, you know, top academic both. students yeah. both. And so it's a challenge, but like you it said, a, a balance challenge. and certain individuals can reach that goal and right. it's not for everybody. But, yeah. Um, yeah. but, you know, if you can do it, yeah. It's, it, it's possible, as you said. And I think, yeah. you know, if you if you start deciding that I'm just going to be the best I can be. Yeah. Yep. The whole comparison game, it's it's terrible for all of us. If you're living in a neighborhood and you're like, oh, they got their kitchen redone. Yeah. Oh, I should get mine redone. No. Yeah. You're always do the best think you can that, yeah, do. It's better. Just stay in your own little lane. Yep. And do the best you can do. Get your players being the best they can be. 100%. And they're going to develop a different, you know, ranges and times. And yeah. and if you can keep them motivated to do it, it's amazing what these guys can do. It really yeah. is. And what makes uh, what makes Georgia Tech special? What do you love about that place so much? I think it demands that. Okay. It demands you to do both, and uh, it, it, you're surrounded by people that just enjoy being excellent in the classroom they love figuring out things and going and it's a it's a problem solving school uh, and what I've seen is we've had guys come through there we had one of the top players in uh, college tennis come through there Guillermo Gomez who came over from Spain and lost to Stevie Johnson in one of the best matches I've seen in college tennis six seven seven six seven six I think at the national indoors in the finals and what a great match and just watch and he wanted to play pro tennis and you know he but at the same time he'd go back and he was an industrial engineer yeah. and he he did really well in school and he got out hurt his knee jumped straight in got a job with microsoft i saw him here coaching a player and is loving just kind of helping the player and going but loves his job yeah. at, at microsoft out in seattle and you're looking at that and i, I ask him i go man how did how did you kind of work your way up and do that well there and he goes I really don't know. I didn't think I was going to get the job, yeah. <laughs> but I called and I contacted him and they gave me the job and then he goes, the first day on the job, he goes, they, uh, 
they said, hey, we got this project and we need to figure out who can do this project for us. And he said, they explained the whole project and they were out there and, and, and he goes, I raised my hand, I'll do it. And you know, they, they said, okay, you got it. We need this by over the weekend, you got to finish it. And, and he, he came to me and he goes, I had no idea what I was doing. I <laughs> just raised, took the I job. Just raised yeah. my hand. Yeah, I'll I can take do it. it. I'll figure it out later. I'll yeah. figure it out. And honestly, that's what happens. You get into school and you have you have tough classes. You got things. Yeah. You don't know what you're doing half the time, but you figure it out. Yeah. And what are you doing on the court? Hey, you figure it out. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you wouldn't, you're you pretending get, half the yeah, time, yeah. and, and you but you're, you're that trying you've never to work before, through. Yeah, out. and you're working through a process. You know who you are. Yeah. And you're trying to work through the process in that match, and you figure it out. And I feel like that's what Georgia Tech does for you. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So. No, I mean, a great advice. I I think it's just so valuable what you're what you're saying right now because it's what I preach a lot of the times mm. too. And then of course I'm learning a few things from you too. Um, couple questions I want to ask you that I ask sure. every coach. Um, one is sort of the student athlete experience. What's your best college tennis memory, either as a player, yeah. coach, or both? Golly, one of our, my better memories as a coach was probably one of our worst years, which is probably not a good thing to say, but we were having a terrible year. And uh, we weren't going to make the NCAAs. We were struggling. and. We were just pouring into the guys. You can do this, man. And we were coming up with a different, <laughs> you know, talk every match, trying to get them ready. And yeah. because we weren't, we were a little bit young. We were. It was actually one of Chris Eubanks' first year, and we we're just trying to get them to believe. And all the guys, and we just couldn't get over the hump. Losing four three, losing four three, and close, and almost, and yeah, no, almost. But you got to finish. And one of those years, and we came in and we were playing um, a Duke. And they were ranked eight in the nation, and we were just on our way down. And we only had that weekend in the ACC tournament to try to qualify for the NCAA tournament. And we played them at home, and we literally just fought our tails off and somehow got through and got a 4-3 win over a top 10 team that year. And we weren't ranked. Okay. We were out of the rankings. Yeah. We were nowhere. Shocked them. Shocked them. And uh, came out, got the win. Guys are thrilled. Go in the ACC tournament, get a win over a top 16 team, another team that was a top 30 team, and uh, squeeze in to the NCAA tournament that year. And that's, you know, obviously you want to make a run and go all the way in the tournament. I think we lost second round of the tournament or something. But, uh, but just the process of believe, man. Yeah. Stay there. If, if there's something you always want to maybe change and do something, and, and, and sometimes you do have to change, go to, you know, B plan. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's, you got to know when to do that. But we we're doing a lot of the right things and, and keeping on. And we literally went from unranked to getting into the NCAA tournament in, in like a week and a half. Your best, your best turnaround season It was an unbelievable turnaround. It was phenomenal because we were not even thought about. Yeah and we probably upset some bubble teams but just the the guys to to stick around and to keep trying to stay engaged in the season and that's some of your toughest time it's easy oh we're doing well and we got the season everybody's good and you know you're kind of going up and yeah. everybody's excited that doesn't make a you know a, a, yeah, it makes a good season it makes your athletic director happy but uh, it's not a great the story. coaching side of getting people when they're not, it's not, the results don't show it. Yeah. Is, I mean, that's people, junior players all the time. They're working hard, working hard, show up here, and oh my gosh, I was nervous, and then and it's tough, and they had that, but, but to get them to believe and, and all the way to the end is, to me, that's special. Yeah, that is, that is. Um, last question, it's about the student athletes and their families. What's the best mm. piece of advice you could give someone who's going through this process mm. and they want to learn something from coach Kenny Thorne. You know, it's interesting. We've had so many parents and you, you want to look at it and go, oh, you know, I think in junior tennis or some, I've talked to some coaches around and they're like, oh, the parents are tough. The parents are tough. We've had some great parents, really, really good parents. We've had parents of some of our best players come up to me and I'll tell you, one of them is Kevin King's dad. He came up and he did a great job with Kevin, but he came through and the one question he, he asked me, the, really the only question I remember him asking me about Kevin was, is Kevin being a good teammate? 
I was like, don't you want to know about this? And he goes, no, I know you got that. Yeah. Is Kevin being a good teammate? And I'm going, <laughs> I didn't know how to answer because I was just why, like. Why did you even think that was like, why do you think that was an important question? You know what? Because he coached football. Okay. He understand what, yeah, what a team, team environment. what a team needs. Yeah. He understood team. He understood Kevin could win, but is he helping everybody else win? Yeah. And I know we come into this thinking, oh man, I've got to do. And if you're doing what's best for the team, everybody's getting better. You're getting better faster too. Yeah. If you're only doing what's better for yourself. I know that seems like in tennis you have to do that, and there is part of that. Yeah, yeah, you got. That's hold individual your own. lessons yeah. we do. That's a, that's all part of it for sure. Yeah, but the advantage of a team is understanding. Hey, let's get everybody on the same boat going forward, and you know, it, we'll all rise together. Yeah, and so I, I just thought that was a great question from a parent that. Uh, you know, it, it, he could ask plenty of questions, and his, it, oh, of course he wants his son to be a champion. I mean, I know him well. Yeah. He wants him to be the best. He wants him to be Olympic champ. He wants all of it. But to me, he was like, th there was some trust involved, and, and he wanted to see if his son was a good teammate. Amazing. Coach, okay. thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. That was great. Got some great insight, and um, hope to see you around. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Yeah.